Uh, good morning and welcome to the 14th meeting of the committee in 2015. Uh, if you wish to use tablet devices or mobile phones during the meeting, please switch them to the flight mode as they may otherwise affect the broadcasting system. Some committee members may consult tablet devices during the meeting. Uh, this is because we provide papers in a digital format. Uh, we have apologies today from Alec Rowley. Uh, agenda item one is the only item of business that we have today, and it's our first day of stage two consideration of the Air Weapons and Licensing Scotland Bill. I'd like to welcome Michael Matheson, MSP, Cabinet Secretary for Justice, who is joining us today as the member in charge of the bill. Uh, today we are considering section 1 to 40 of the bill and all amendments to those sections. Uh, these sections from part 1 of the bill um, establish an air weapons certificate system in Scotland. At our next meeting on Wednesday the 20th of May, we will consider sections 41 to 59 of the bill on alcohol licensing. Any member wishing to lodge amendments to those sections must do so by 12 noon this coming Friday, the 15th of May. We will consider the remaining sections and schedules of the bill at our meeting on Friday, the 27th of May. This will cover civil licensing provisions like scrap metal dealers, sexual entertainment venues, and taxi and private car hire licensing. I'd like to point out now that owing to the late spring holiday, the deadline for lodging amendments to the civil licensing sections of the bill is 12 noon on Wednesday the 20th of May. That's Wednesday of next week. M MSP should lodge amendments with the legislation clerks in the usual way. Uh, before we move on to consideration of amendments, I think it would be helpful if I set out the procedure for stage two consideration. Everyone should have with them a copy of the bill as introduced, the marshalled list of amendments that was published on Monday, and the groupings of amendments which set out the amendments in the order in which they will be debated. There will be one debate on each group of amendments. I will call the member who lodged the first amendment in each group to speak to and move their amendment and to speak to all of the other amendments in the group. Uh, members who have not lodged amendments in the group but who wish to speak should indicate by catching my attention in the usual way. Uh, if he has not already spoken in the group, I will invite the Cabinet Secretary to contribute to the de debate just before I move to the winding up speech. As with a debate in the Chamber, the member who is winding up on a group may take interventions from other members if they wish. The debate on each group will be concluded by me inviting the member who moved the First Amendment in the group to wind up. Following debate on each group, I will check whether the member who moved the First Amendment in the group wishes to press their amendment to a vote or to withdraw it. If they wish to press ahead, I will put that, the question on that amendment. If a member wishes to withdraw their amendment after it has been moved, they must seek the committee's agreement to do so. If any committee member objects, the committee must immediately move to the vote on the amendment. If any member does not want to move their amendment when I call it, they should say, not moved. Please remember that any other MSP may move such an amendment. If no one moves the amendment, I will immediately call the next amendment on the marshalled list. Only committee members are allowed to vote at stage two. Voting in any division is by show of hands. It is important that members keep their hands clearly raised until the clerk has recorded the vote. The committee is required to indicate formally that it is considered and agreed each section of the bill, and so I will put a question in each section at the appropriate point. Today, we'll go no further than part one of the bill. Uh, so let's move on to the list of amendments. And I call amendment one in the name of Cameron Buchanan, grouped with amendments two, three, five, six, 36 and 37. Uh, Cameron Buchanan, can I ask you to move amendment one and speak to all amendments in the group, please? Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, Minister. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, this first one is really as a probing amendment because I think air weapon is a loaded term and the air guns are used, are intended to use for harm to kill. I don't think this is actually, it, I'm aware that in the Firearms Act of 68 it was an air weapon, but it's rather a probing amendment. I think it's worth raising this because I think it's rather a misleading term, weapon, whereas gun I think is better. And I was just going to see if this is uh, what you thought about that. Thank you. Uh, can I call the Cabinet Secretary to speak to Amendment 2 and other amendments in the group, please? 
Uh, convener, I am grateful for the opportunity to bring a number of Government amendments to Part 1 of the Air Weapons and Licensing Bill uh, this morning. Uh, since the Bill was introduced, we have continued to listen carefully to the views of stakeholders and we have taken into account the evidence at committee sessions and the recommendations that were set out in the Committee's Stage 1 report. And as a result, we are bringing forward a small number uh, of amendments which I hope will, you know, the Committee will agree, help to clarify and also to fine-tune uh, the Bill's provisions. Uh, I also welcome the opportunity to respond to uh, the uh, issues that have been raised in the amendments that have been tabled by Cameron Buchanan, uh, and I am grateful for him in his work in this area. Uh, I want to begin by what is probably a more co the most complex grouping of amendments. Uh, Mr Buchanan's uh, Amendment 1 would remove a key component of a definition of air weapons for the purposes of part one of the bill without putting anything in its place. As such, the, result, the resulting position appears unworkable and confused. In practical terms, the removal of subsection two of section one uh, would, uh, without providing any alternative definition of the meaning of air weapons, uh, includes a risk that the bill might be read as attempting to capture air weapons that are either so high-powered that they are controlled by the Firearms Act 1968 or they are so low-powered that they are not considered lethal. In short, Amendment 1, if passed, could significantly change the nature of the licensing regime set out in Part 1 of the Bill and remove the, uncertainty, the certainty over exactly what is covered, uh, that is so important, which is so important to a licensing regime. Uh, Mr Buchanan's uh, uh, Amendments 5, 6 and 37 uh, may be uh, uh, thought of as being uh, acting together as they address an issue around airsoft guns uh, for approved clubs. In practice, these amendments attempt to exempt those using airsoft guns from the need to hold an air weapon certificate. Convener, I believe that the bill as it is drafted already provides a definition of air weapons which meets our principles of developing a proportionate, familiar and practical licensing regime. We have consulted widely on this and I believe that it is generally well understood. However, I also believe that we can uh, make the position even more clearer uh, for all users of the legislation and achieve Mr Buchanan's Of course. Mr. <coughs> thank you, Convener. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. The issue in terms of the definition of the 1968 Act, Cabinet Secretary, uh, wep air weapons and the definition of air weapons has changed dramatically in the use of airsoft weapons and, say, for example, paintballing uh, as an air weapon, which are uh, powered up the same way as many air weapons and uh, air rifles and guns are powered up now. Is there not a need at, this, at some stage to actually tighten up the definition so that we're clear about what types of air weapons are covered in the existing 68 Act and what weapons the Scottish Government intend to cover in relation to this legislation, because I think there has been major significant advances in the use of what would be termed or could be termed air weapons uh, that may not be covered by this Act, such okay. as uh, paintballing and airsoft weapons. If the member bears with me, I'm coming to that very point uh, in, the, uh, in the explanation I'm providing. Uh, can I just uh, go back to the point that Mr Buchanan uh, uh, wishes to clarify the position on, on the use of airsoft uh, guns by Amendments 2 uh, and 3 in his name? Uh, we have been clear from the outset that it is not our intention to licence very low-powered air weapons such as BB guns or those used for airsoft pursuits. In legal terms, such guns are not generally considered to be firearms within the meaning of the Firearms Act 1968. They are instead regulated elsewhere. For example, uh, airsoft guns are regulated as realistic uh, um, imitation firearms under existing GB legislation in the form of the Violent Crime Reduction Act 2006. Uh, this prohibits manufacture, import and sale of realistic imitations, uh, with a small number of exemptions. These exemptions include film and theatre production, historic reenactments and airsoft skirmishing in clubs affiliated to the UK Airsoft Retailers Association. 
A number of stakeholders have, however, written to ministers since the bill was introduced, seeking clarification over the types of guns to be included in the regime. Amendment 2, therefore, aims to clarify the meaning of air weapons for the purposes of the licensing regime. It should help to put the position beyond doubt by excluding such guns if they are not firearms within the meaning of Section 57, 1 of the 1968 Act. This excludes air guns such as airsoft and paintball guns. Uh, Amendment 3 is simply a consequential change arising from this uh, to make it clear that the component parts of such guns would, not, would, would also fall out with the licensing regime. So I believe that uh, Amendments 2 and 3 uh, provide a clearer and a simpler approach, addressing the matters uh, that have been raised by Mr Buchanan's amendments uh, and also the uh, commentary I've offered. I also hope it uh, clarifies for uh, Mr uh, Wilson the present arrangements for the regulation of imitation firearms as well. And I therefore ask that Mr Buchanan does not press Amendment uh, 156 and 37 and invite members to support Amendments 2, 3 uh, in my name. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Does any other member wish to enter the debate? No, in which case, uh, can I call Cameron Buchanan to wind up and to press or withdraw, yeah. please? Does the Minister not think we should be specifying paintball and softball rather than just sort of giving a general um, uh, definition of them? Because I think it would be helpful, because the 68 Act, in those days, uh, paintball and softball probably didn't exist in 68. I don't know, certainly paintball didn't. I just wonder if we shouldn't be sort of specifying it a bit, which is the whole point of my amendment there. Um, and I think it's, uh, you know, as long as it takes place in an approved club, it should be all right, I'd have thought. But I just think we should be a bit more specific on the definition. I think the Cabinet Secretary was pretty specific in what he says. Do you want mm. to repeat what you, you said, Cabinet well, Secretary? Well, the, the, the amendments that were put forward, two and three, are yeah. to be clearer around that matter. But as it's also tied into the Firearms 1968 Act, and that's why we're providing further clarification on that around air weapons. Fine, okay, I think, yes, I, I, but you, you wouldn't specify any more. You wouldn't say, I just think it's, okay, um, I just, you're not trying to ban it from a hobby, that's the point. You're from, it's not trying to be banned or anything. I'm just concerned that it was not mentioned, that's all. So I, no, this is an unusual way of dealing with yeah, this, right. Cabinet yeah. Secretary, if you want to Probably come no, back. We're, we're not trying to ban anything. We're actually trying to make sure there is provision to, and to offer the clarification that some within the sector have asked for. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very clear about the regime that will operate and apply to their particular, uh, uh, the, the particular weapons which they use. OK, Mr okay. Buchanan. Yeah, fine. Thank you very much. Well, I would then withdraw my um, uh, amendments. Thank you. OK. Uh, so the question is that one amendment one be agreed to, and you are saying that you are uh, wishing to withdraw yes. amendment one. Uh, are the committee content that amendment one be withdrawn? Thank you. Um, I call amendment two in the name of the cabinet secretary, already debated with amendment one. Cabinet secretary, to move formally, please. Moved. Uh, the question is that amendment two be agreed to. Are we all agreed? agreed. Thank you. Uh, can I call Amendment 3 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, already debated with Amendment 1. Cabinet Secretary, to move formally, please. Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 3 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, the question is that Section 1 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, thank you. Can I call Amendment 4 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, grouped with Amendments 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 20? Uh, can I point out that if Amendment 12 in the group is agreed to, uh, you cannot, uh, that I cannot call Amendments 13 or 14 respectively. Um, Cameron Buchanan, can I ask you to move Amendment 4 and speak to all amendments in the group, please? Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, it, amendment 4 would exempt holders of firearm or shotgun certificate for, from the requirement for an air weapon certificate. The point of this is to, that, so the possessor of a firearm or shotgun certificate can confidentially be assumed to be fit to possess an air weapon, having already obtained a certificate. He's already had got a certificate. To force them and the police to go through administrative obstacles to obtain an air weapons license, I think is therefore unnecessary and a bureaucratic burden on both the applicant and the police, as we heard from the police. And that's, the, that's really from section four. Um, there was another amendment, didn't I? Um, no, that's, it. That's, that's all I was going to say at the moment. Thank you. So that she finished with Amendment 4 and all amendments in that group, Mr Buchanan? I think so, yes. Just a... 
it's section four and I've just I've got to check that four and ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, fourteen. I think. And so. twenty. Yeah, twenty. Okay. Yeah, because they're consequential. Yeah. Okay. Does any other member wish to enter the debate here? No. Can I call the cabinet secretary, please? Uh, can, you, can I just clarify that you're dealing with amendments four to twenty? Four, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and twenty, Cabinet okay. Secretary. Thanks, Convener. Um, uh, Mr. Buchanan's amendment uh, in this group uh, would fundamentally change the way in which we and the police approach the licensing of air weapons under the new uh, legislation. Uh, they reflect many of the objections uh, we've heard to the principle of air weapons licensing. Uh, those objections were expressed by some of the shooting representatives on our expert consultative panel and by other organisations and individuals who responded to our public consultation in early 2013. The committee heard similar views uh, during the first evidence session on the bill in November last year. However, we believe that part one achieves our aim of setting out a familiar, proportionate and practical licensing regime for air weapons. Uh, the committee and the parliament have approved the uh, principles underpinning the bill at stage one uh, of this process. Amendment 4 and the consequential amendment 12 it would provide an automatic exemption for the need for an air weapon certificate to anyone who holds a, nurse, an air, a firearm certificate or shotgun certificate issued by the police under the Firearms Act 1968. I've heard uh, what Mr Buchanan has to say on this matter and I appreciate that providing such a blanket exemption could appear to ease the burden on both the police and those who shoot. In fact, we looked at this as a potential exemption from the licensing requirements at the early stages of development uh, in this legislation. However, we rejected it for a number of reasons. Amongst other things, the granting of firearms and shotgun certificates is subject to different tests under the Firearms Act 1968. For instance, uh, the test for uh, granting shotgun certificates is less stringent. There is no fit and proper person test, and the onus is on the police to demonstrate the absence of a good reason. We've been clear throughout the development of the bill that we do not think that this is a right approach in the licensing of firearms in a modern Scotland. In addition, uh, firearms, shotguns and air weapons are used for different purposes in different environments and circumstances depending on their technical specification and power level. It does not necessarily follow that someone who has a legitimate reason for requiring a more powerful firearm will also have a good reason for requiring an air weapon. For air weapons, we believe that it's right and proper that applicants should be able to demonstrate that they have a reasonable use of these guns and that they can be permitted to use, possess and otherwise interact with them in a reasonable, responsible and safe manner. We do, however, make provision in section 5.2 to allow the Chief Constable to take as satisfied the test that a, fit, a person is fit to be entrusted with an air weapon and that they are not prohibited uh, from possessing firearms under the Firearms Act 1968 if they already hold a firearms or shotgun certificate. And I believe that this goes a significant way towards Mr Buchanan's aim, but, remains our, but it remains our uh, overall intent uh, in the test for granting and or renewal of a fire uh, and air weapons certificate. On that basis, I would urge uh, members to reject Amendment 4 and 12 as tabled by Mr Buchanan. Now, the remaining amendments in this group seek to modify the requirement for uh, grant or renewal of an air weapons certificate in two ways. Amendment 13 and 14 appear to offer an alternative to Amendment 4 and 12. They would require the Chief Constable to consider any applicant who holds a firearms or shotgun certificate to automatically meet the requirement to be granted an air weapon certificate without proper <coughs> inquiry. Amendment 10 and 12, sorry, 10, 11 and 20 seek to reduce the number of requirements for granting an air weapon certificate to make it more consistent with the less stringent test which applies to shotgun certificates. If agreed to, Amendment 10 and 11 would remove the need 
for the Chief Constable to be satisfied of the fit person and good reason requirement. Amendment 20 would consequentially amend Section 7 of the Bill to remove reference to the good, the good reason test in relation to the granting of young persons certificates. However, Mr Buchanan has not followed us through to visitor permits or revocation uh, and leaves uh, what is potentially a complicated set of different tests for different circumstances, which I suspect is not his intention. As I have already said, uh, we do not believe that this is the correct approach to firearms licensing. And again, I would urge members to reject these amendments. I was just going to ask the Cabinet Secretary to take an intervention because I think the language that the, conveners, the Cabinet Secretary is using is referring to firearms. We are talking about air weapons uh, in this, this bill. Firearms comes under different legislation, UK legislation, under the 68 Act. And now, just to try and get clarification, Convener, when the Cabinet Secretary is talking about firearms, does he mean air weapons or does he mean firearms? Because I think we need to be clear that firearms come under the 68 Act and air weapons come out of the jurisdiction of the Scottish uh, Parliament and the Scottish Government in terms of the, the bill that's going through Parliament at the present moment. And it's just that use of language about firearms versus air weapons, which we're actually dealing with air weapons, not firearms. I'm, I'm not entirely clear what the member's point is. The if clarification is firearms are defined under the 68 Act. This bill refers to air weapons and uh, not firearms. And it's just that, that conf the confusion that may be caused uh, amongst the general public when we talk about firearms and air weapons, that, as I said, uh, the, the, you know, firearms are defined under the 68 Act and air weapons we're trying to define under this bill because we actually refer to air weapons in the bill and not firearms. And it's just start trying to get that so that everybody is clear that when we talk about a firearm, if you apply for a license for a, fi a firearm, you're applying for a license under the 68 Act. If you're in future, once this bill is passed, you'll be applying for an air, air weapon license, not a firearms license. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, in short, that's correct, yes. So when I make reference to an air weapon, it's to do with this licensing regime in this bill. And when I make reference to firearms, I'm referring to firearms under the uh, 1968 Act. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I call Cameron Buchanan to wind up and press her withdraw, please? Thank you very much. Are you, are you, I wasn't quite clear. If you, you're saying that... Mr. that Mr. Buchanan, sorry, yeah. it's... Uh, pr uh, press or withdraw now um, and I'll, wind up. It's not questioning the Cabinet right, Secretary I'll anymore. If you, you wanted to question him, then you should, should have, have done that by I'll intervention during the point that he was speaking. I'll press. Thank you. Okay. You are press. Okay. The question is that Amendment 4 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Uh, in which case we go to the, the vote. Those in favour of Amendment 4, please show. And those, against, okay. and those against Amendment 4, please show. Thank you. Um, on Amendment 4, uh, those in favour, 1. Uh, those against, 5. The question is disagreed to. Uh, the question is that Section 2 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Can I call Amendment 5 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 1. Uh, Mr Buchanan, to move or not move, please. Uh, not moved. Um, are the committee content that that's withdrawn? Agreed. Thank you. Uh, can I call Amendment 6 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 1? Mr Buchanan, to move or not move? Not moved. Uh, are the committee content with that? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 7 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, grouped with Amendments 31, 32 and 33? Uh, Cabinet Secretary, to move Amendment 7 and speak to all amendments in the group, please. Uh, convener, I move Amendment 7 in my name. Uh, section 24 of the Bill 
governs commercial transactions involving air weapons and broadly matches existing arrangements for firearms in the Violent Crime Reduction Act 2006. One of the provisions under section 24.2c allows a registered firearms dealer to sell or transfer an air weapon to a person who does not have an air weapon certificate if the gun uh, is not handed to them uh, but is sent for delivery uh, to a place out with the UK. Uh, this has caused concern uh, to stakeholders uh, that the bill would prevent sale of firearms to people from England and Wales. Uh, the committee uh, reflected these concerns in paragraph 139 uh, of its stage one report and recommended that we take steps to ensure that remote sale to other parts of the UK are not prevented in this way. I'm very happy to accept this recommendations and in my reply to the stage one report uh, and the amendments uh, in my name will ensure that we achieve this. Amendment 32 extends the existing provision uh, for sales for delivery out with uh, the UK to ensure that it also applies to uh, sales for delivery in England and Wales. Uh, this will uh, be permitted where the gun is sent directly uh, to a registered firearms dealer in England and Wales, uh, where the buyer can collect it. Amendment 7 is consequential to Amendment 32 and amends the exemption at paragraph 15 of Schedule 1 to allow a person to purchase an air weapon in these circumstances without holding an air weapon certificate. Again, this extends a provision as drafted, uh, which applies to people who wish to purchase an air weapon for delivery to a place out with the UK. Kavina, it's also important that we maintain the principle that a person must have an air weapon certificate or hold a permit or be otherwise exempt from the general requirement to hold an air weapon certificate if they are to purchase an air weapon in Scotland. It is also an important principle of existing firearms legislation that commercial sales and transfer of firearms, including air weapons, should be completed face to face where the buyer is not also a registered firearms dealer. I believe that these two amendments uphold these principles uh, while ensuring that we are not preventing legitimate trade in air weapons to people from England and Wales and therefore invite members to support Amendment 7 and 32 in my name. Uh, I believe that uh, Mr Buchanan's Amendment 31 is intended to address the very same concern that I have just spoken about. However, I do not believe that the approach it takes is the right one. In fact, the uh, wording proposed in Mr Buchanan's Amendment 31 was considered when drafting the bill, but decided against for the following reasons. Section 32 of the Violent Crime Reduction Act 2006 requires commercial sales of air weapons to individuals in the UK to be concluded face to face. This prevents potentially lethal firearms being delivered directly to people's homes. Instead, they must collect the item from a registered firearms dealer. The bill repeals section 32 of the VCRA in Scotland, but creates at section 25 uh, to preserve this policy aim. If Mr Buchanan's amendments were pressed, uh, there is a risk that companies could set themselves up as registered firearms dealers in Scotland for the purposes of selling air weapons by mail order to the rest of the UK. This would undermine the policy underpinning section 32 of the VCRA and section 25 of this bill and enable such dealers to bypass the face-to-face -face requirement. We have therefore uh, agreed uh, the wording proposed in Amendment 32 with the Gun Trade Association and the Home Office, which achieves the same aim but preserves the face-to-face -face policy of the VCRA and Section 25 of the Bill. Given that Amendment 7 and 32 meet the aims which I have outlined and fully address the Committee's concerns at Stage 1, I would ask Mr Buchanan not to move Amendment 31. Amendment uh, 33 is slightly different. Uh, section 26 of the bill was intended to replicate Section 18 of the Firearms Amendment Act 1988. 
That provision allows the government to notify fellow EU countries when high-powered firearms or shotguns are sold for export to any such country. However, because air weapons are not covered by EU firearms law, there is no requirement to share such information. Police Scotland have therefore questioned what they would be expected to do with the information gathered under the provisions in Section 26 notification. We have examined the position again and have concluded that such a notification requirement would place an unnecessary burden on both registered firearms dealers and the police for no practical uh, purpose. Uh, to be clear, uh, for members, uh, details on any sale of air weapons will still have to be recorded in the dealer's register of transactions and could therefore be checked by the police if necessary. And I am therefore bringing forward Amendment 33 to remove Section 26 in its entirety and I would invite members to support it. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Can I call Cameron Buchanan to speak to Amendment 31 and other amendments in the group, please? Thank you very much indeed. I would suggest that, I will, uh, that, that this is going to allow registered firearms dealers in Scotland, I thought, to deliver air weapons to another place. But in view of what the Minister said about the, um, uh, the way it was handled, or that, that it would not have to be a dealer, a registered dealer, and face-to-face, -face, I accept. So I would therefore withdraw. Will be done at the appropriate time. Do any other members wish to enter the debate? Cabinet Secretary, do you wish to wind up? Nothing further. Uh, thank you. The question is then that Amendment 7 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you. Uh, can I call Amendment 8 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, agreed with Amendment 9? Cabinet Secretary, to move Amendment 8 and speak to both amendments, please. Uh, can you move Amendment 8 in my name? Schedule 1 of the Bill sets out a range of exemptions for the general requirement for uh, air weapon certificates under Section 2 of the Bill. It details the circumstances in which a person may use, possess, purchase or acquire an air weapon without the need for holding an air weapon certificate. These cover a wide range of situations, including use at an approved club, uh, use at a fun fair or other authorised event, and possession, may, and possession by registered firearms dealers or auctioneers, etc. Uh, it also sets out certain exemptions from the restrictions on transactions involving air weapons under Section 24. Amendments 8 and 9 are minor technical amendments to uh, the exemption list in Schedule 1. Amendment 8 will make it explicit in paragraph 16 of Schedule 1 that it will not be an offence under Section 24 of the Bill for a person to lend or let on hire an air weapon to non-certificate holders provided it is for the purposes exempt elsewhere in the schedule. For example, this might include people hiring air weapons for a miniature rifle range at a funfair or an actor uh, borrowing an air weapon for use on a film production. Amendment 8 is a technical amendment which brings the wording of the provision more closely into line with the language used in other firearms legislation and is therefore more familiar to the police, shooters and other stakeholders. It also makes it explicit that exemptions allows, the exemption allows for commercial hiring out of air weapons for exempt purposes without the need uh, to be a registered firearms dealer. On that basis, I move Amendment 8 and invite members to agree to it. There are a range of duties undertaken by public servants which may require them to use possess or otherwise deal with air weapons. Uh, such activities are listed in paragraph 17.2 of Schedule 1. Paragraph 17.3 lists those public servants who may not uh, require to hold air weapon certificates for such purposes. It includes police officers, members of the armed forces and other such uh, as uh, those involved in forensic examination, etc., for those unfamiliar with the role of the Queen's and Lord Treasurer's Remembrancer, uh, ref often referred to as the QLTR, is the Crown's representative in Scotland who deals with ownerless property, uh, for example, the assets of devolved companies or the estate of individuals who die with no will or traceable heir. Uh, this uh, may potentially include air weapons. 
So this exemption allows the QLTR to take possession without requiring a certificate. This amendment extends exemption as originally drafted to ensure that others uh, properly authorised by the QLTR uh, may take possession of air weapons on the QLTR's behalf without requiring a certificate. This essentially provides the necessary legal cover for the QLTR's staff or other agents who act on their behalf. Uh, this approach has been discussed and agreed with the QLTR's office, and I move the amendment and invite members to agree to it. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Does any member wish to enter the debate? No, I take it you won't wish to wind up, Cabinet Secretary. So can I ask if the, question, the Amendment 8 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 9 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, already debated with Amendment 8? Cabinet Secretary, to move formally, please. Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 9 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. The question is that Schedule 1 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Uh, the question is that sections 3 and 4 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 10 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 4. Uh, Mr Buchanan, to move or not move, please. Not moved. Uh, are the committee content that that's withdrawn? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 11 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 4. Mr Buchanan, to move or not move, please. Not moved. Committee content with that. Thank you. Uh, can I call Amendment 12 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 4. Mr Buchanan, to move or not move, please. Not moved. Thank you. Committee content with that. Thank you. Can I call Amendment 13 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 4. Mr Buchanan, to move or not move, please. Not moved. Are the committee content? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 14 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 4. Mr Buchanan, to move or not move, please. Not moved. Are the committee content? Thank you. Um, the question is that Section 5 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The question is that Section 6 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you. Uh, can I call Amendment 15 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, grouped with Amendments 16, 17, 18, 19, 26 and 27? Cabinet Secretary, can I ask you to move Amendment 15 and speak to all other amendments in the group, please? Uh, Convener, I move Amendment uh, 15 in my name. Uh, the Scottish Government is committed to ensuring that the use of air weapons by young people is properly and closely regulated. Accordingly, in the uh, most recent uh, published statistics, more than 45% of recorded crimes and offences involving air weapons are committed by persons aged 20 and under. Similarly, over 50% of those victim victims injured in offences in which a firearms, uh, which, in which a firearm has, uh, was allegedly used, uh, has uh, come from individuals who were aged under 20. Um, the bill, uh, therefore, sets out practical requirements and conditions around... Can intervention. Cabinet Secretary, could you clarify the injury was actually by an air weapon, not a firearm? It was by, by, uh, by air weapons, you, yes. You, you, you've fallen into that trap again of using the, basically the, uh, the language uh, in terms of firearm when it should be an air weapon. Uh, because if it was a, an incident involving a firearm, then it would be a more serious incident than an air weapon. Any incident is serious, but it's just that the, I'm just trying to, sorry about being pernickety, but I'm just trying to get the language right when this goes on the official record, that we are talking about air weapons, not firearms, when you the, refer to these statistics that you're uh, using at the present moment. And an air weapon is a firearm, and it is classed under the 1968 Act as a firearm. That's right, Cabinet Secretary, but what we're, what we're dealing with is the issue of air weapons. And if you're saying that the firearm, the incidents that you re you've re reported to the committee involve firearms, it's just the definition. They've recorded they, as firearms incidents. So, so they are recorded as firearms yes. incidents. So they are, they are firearms and they're recorded under the legislation as firearms incidents. Yeah. And an air weapon is a firearm under the 68 Act. 
I think that's the confusing part for some of the members, Cabinet Secretary, um, because people are a, a lot... It would be much easier, let's face facts, if we had control over uh, all uh, of these powers. Um, and I think there's a little bit of confusion about the fact that we are allowed to deal with air weapons here, yet the air weapons scenario previously uh, was dealt with under the Firearms Act of 1968 too, in terms of definition. I appreciate the challenge that may have for some of the members, uh, but the terminology is correct in relation to the legislation that applies at the present moment. But I do appreciate for some members in trying to make that distinction, uh, there are some challenges around that matter. Thank you. Can we, sorry, just for Very briefly, Mr Wilson. Thank you. It's not for the members around the table, it's for the general public that are actually listening into this debate, and they have to be clear about what we're referring to in terms of air weapons and firearms. Sorry about that, Cabinet Secretary, but it's just so... Well, for, for the record, to be clear for the public, is that an air weapon is a firearm, legally is defined as a firearm, under the 1968 Act. So that is the challenge around that. Whether the 68 Act is amended and changed in order to reflect changes in that is a matter for the, the UK Government. But that is the factual basis in which we operate at the present moment. So, for the public, it's important they're aware of that. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. It, the Bill, will, therefore, it sets out uh, particular requirements and conditions around the purchase, acquisition, ownership and possession of air weapons by young people and the types of shooting which may be undertaken by certificate holders of 14 to 17 years of age. Amendment 15 is a minor drafting change which simply highlights the fact that any certificate granted to a young person uh, must include a condition prohibiting the purchase and ownership of an air weapon, as well as one or more condition restricting the process and the use of any air weapon in certain defined purposes. Uh, moving to Amendment 17, while we fully accept that there are a number of legitimate reasons why a young person might possess and use an air weapon, uh, and that this is properly recognised in terms of Section 75, we do not believe that it is appropriate for a young person to own such a gun in their own right. Uh, Section 74 therefore states that, while someone who is aged 4 to 17 years uh, old may apply for a young person certificate to use and possess an air weapon. They will not be allowed to purchase or own such a weapon until they are 18. Amendment 16 uh, extends the condition and drafts uh, and draft as drafted at section 74 to make it clear that uh, 14 to 17 year olds will not be permitted to hire an air weapon or accept one as a gift. They will, however, be allowed to borrow an air weapon, for example, for an air, uh, from an air weapons uh, certificate holder or at an approved club. This amendment ensures that the conditions for young persons are brought more closely into line with the provisions for the Firearms Act 1968, which makes it an offence for a person under 18 years of age to purchase or hire an air weapon or for anyone to sell, let or hire or make a gift of an air weapon to a person under 18 years of age. It will therefore provide greater consistency for shooters. Uh, following representations made to us by a number of main shooting organisations and the evidence given to the committee in November, we've looked again at the list of purposes for which a 14 to 17 year old may be granted a young person's air weapon certificate. On Amendment 17, I am very conscious of the fact that some organisations, including the League Against Cruel Sports, in their evidence to the committee have stated that they oppose all shooting of live quarry. I fully understand this view, and uh, certainly the abuse and harm caused to domestic animals and wildlife by the inappropriate and illegal use of air weapons is completely unacceptable. The committee heard from the Scottish SPCA and others about the problems and upset that this can create, and the police will investigate any such crimes reported to them. It is one of the things which the licensing regime is intended to address. However, we have considered carefully all the representations made and have come to the conclusion that the initial drafting of the bill was too restrictive and did not reflect the reality of shooting for many young people, especially those who live in rural areas 
or those who are engaged in sport shooting. Such shooting can be appropriate in properly controlled circumstances. I am therefore bringing forward Amendment 17 to allow 14 to 17 year olds to take part in shooting for sporting purposes, including shooting live quarry on private land. Uh, suitable quarry might include, for example, pigeons or rabbits. Uh, this change will bring the licensing of air weapons in Scotland into line with the restrictions on use that apply to young persons under UK and EU firearms legislation in relation to more powerful firearms. It should therefore make a more consistent approach for shooters. It is, however, worth emphasising that it remains the responsibility of the Chief Constable to consider each application on its merits. If the Chief Constable de decides that such shooting is not appropriate for a particular applicant, then the certificate would not allow for sport shooting. I can also reassure committee members that extensive guidance is already widely available for shooting organisations and others about the type of live quarry which might properly be shot with air weapons. Uh, we will work closely with those organisations and the police to ensure that Scottish guidance reflects such advice. Any shooting of animals must take into account the power of the gun involved. On Amendment 19 from Mr Buchanan, we accept that restricting shooting for pest control uh, to a young person who is a commercial pest controller uh, or is employed by a pest controller is too restrictive and does not reflect the reality of shooting in many parts of Scotland. Such concerns were raised in evidence given to the committee by Police Scotland in particular, and I accept that the bill, as introduced, goes too far in this regard. Uh, this amendment will allow young people to be able to, for example, volunteer to shoot rats at a church hall or rabbits at an archaeological site. I'm therefore happy to accept the proposed Amendment 19. Uh, given what I said on this issue, I would invite members to support these amendments in my name, as well as Amendment 19 in Mr Buchanan's name. Um, I am not uh, so convinced, however, by Mr Buchanan's other amendments, uh, amendment in this group. While shooting at competitions and events is already one of the potential purposes for which a young person may use or possess an air weapon, Amendment 18 broadens the conditions to add connected activities. This term is not defined in the amendment, and while I'm interested to hear uh, what Mr Buchanan has to say on this issue, I believe that the connected activities is too broad a concept to stand on its own in this context. It might, for example, lead to a position where a person believes that they can shoot in circumstances or at a location which would otherwise be deemed inappropriate. Uh, the conditions at section 75B is already sufficiently broad uh, to cover activities such as travelling to and from an event or competition. This would be considered possession, of the possession for the purposes of participating in the event. Furthermore, the menu of conditions at section 75 are not mutually exclusive and the police can attach any and all as they consider appropriate. For example, if a young person wanted to practice between events and had a suitable place to do so, uh, then the target shooting condition at section 75A could be added to the certificate. Therefore, ask uh, that members reject Mr Buchanan's amendment. Finally, convener, amendments 26 and 7 in my name are consequential to amendment 17. They will allow young people visiting Scotland on a group permit to shoot for shooting purposes or at targets on private land or to shoot in competitions or other events and to do so under the same terms as young people in Scotland with their own certificate. As with my earlier amendment, I would invite members to support amendments 26 and 27. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. I now call Cameron Buchanan to speak to Amendment 18 and other amendments in the group, please, Mr Buchanan. Thank you very much, Convener. What a, Section 18 was to clarify the activities that were connected to competitions, which I don't know that was, that was done. This is training and also uh, for, the, for young people to train for these competitions. I think it's only sensible that young people should be clear that they can practice or train for these events 
as well as compete in them. And I think that's what I meant by section seven, section seven, page four, line 12, taking out competitions and inserting any connected activities. I thought uh, the word competitions was a bit narrow. And I think that's why this practice should be, um, you know, should be allowed. I think that's what I was going to just, uh, yeah. Yep, that's, that's fine. Okay, thank you. thank you. Any other members wish to enter the debate at this point? No. Cabinet Secretary, would you like to wind up, please? Uh, can you just in response to Mr Buchanan's point, as I outlined in my earlier contribution, uh, there is scope for the Chief Constable initiative certificate to make provision for uh, a young person who may wish to practice at an identifiable location uh, to be able to have that included on the certificate. So there's sufficient scope there for that to be added to the certificate as and when it required and when the Chief Constable deems that as being appropriate. Okay. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 15 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Uh, can I call Amendment 16 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, already debated with Amendment 15? Cabinet Secretary, to move formally, please. Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 16 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Uh, can I call Amendment 17 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, already debated with Amendment 15? Cabinet Secretary, to move formally, please. Moved. Uh, the question is that Amendment 17 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Can I call Amendment 18 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 15? Mr Buchanan, to move or not move? Not moved. Are the committee content that that's not moved? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 19 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 15? Mr Buchanan, to move or not move? Not moved. Are the committee content that that's not moved? Um, you, uh, just to clarify, Mr Buchanan has said that he does not want to move Amendment 19. Is that correct? Do you want to move or not move an Amendment 19, Mr it. Buchanan? Sorry. You're moving you. it. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, the question is that Amendment 19 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Can I call Amendment 20 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 4? Mr Buchanan, to move or not move? Um, that is a consequential. Uh, not moved, sorry. Not moved. Are the committee Thank content you. that that's withdrawn? Thank you very much. The question is that section 7 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Can I call amendment 21 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, grouped with amendment 22? Mr Buchanan, to move amendment 21 and speak to both amendments in the group, please. Thank you. I, this was quite clear to me that we shouldn't be restricting the use of, sorry, the length of the young people's certificates. If somebody is 17, should they have to apply for another certificate when they're 18 or 15 or 16? And I, that's why we wanted it to last for five years, irrespective of whether it was, uh, you know, what, their age, so that it would be only fair to allow the same length of time, so they don't pay more than others on this. Um, uh, for the certificate and therefore they wouldn't be discouraged from applying for a certificate. I reckon that if somebody was 16 or 17, they would be discouraged from applying because of the cost. So I wonder if we couldn't make young person certificate last five years, whether they turned or not, whether or not they turned 18. Could you move Amendment 21, please? Moved. Okay. Does any other member wish to enter the debate? No. Cabinet Secretary, please. Uh, convener, it may be helpful if I uh, set out the way in which uh, the licensing regime for young people will operate, which I believe addresses the concern which has been raised by Mr Buchanan. Uh, we've developed the provisions in part one to allow uh, a responsible 14 to 17 year old uh, to hold a certificate in their own right, allowing them to shoot for specific purposes, as we've set out in section seven of the bill. Once those shooters become 18 years of age, we think it's right that they should be able to apply for and hopefully obtain a full air weapon certificate. In addition, they should be able to purchase, acquire and own an air weapon in their own right. For that reason, we introduced Section 8, uh, 1A to make it clear that a young person certificate should expire on their 18th birthday. This does not stop them, though, from applying for a full certificate to come into effect from that birthday. Uh, and this will uh, be made clear in the guidance, which will be published in due course with the bill. 
In practice, we also envisage that the scale of fees uh, which we will bring forward in secondary legislation will include a sliding scale of fees for young people. This will mean that a smaller fee uh, than normal is charged in such cases to reflect the shorter duration for their uh, certificate. A six of Sorry. course. Um, Adam, thank you. Uh, so what you're saying realistically is that from the age of uh, 14 to 18, there will be a sliding scale, but will it reflect the fact that if it's only going to last the, the duration of the certificate, i.e. two or three years? Uh, that's the intention behind the sliding scale that we'll bring forward. So, for example, a 16-year-old would effectively pay for the two years equivalent of their certificate at the time of application. Uh, and Section 36 of the Bill uh, relates to fees, and Section 36.2 in particular allows different fees to be specified for different uh, circumstances. So I believe that uh, the Bill achieves the objective uh, that Mr Buchanan is trying to uh, obtain through these amendments, and I would therefore ask the members uh, to reject these amendments. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, Mr Buchanan, to wind up and press her withdraw, please. Thank you very much, Minister. I understand what you're saying, and therefore I will withdraw my amendment. Okay. Uh, the question is that Amendment 21 be withdrawn. Are uh, members content with that? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 22 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 21? Mr Buchanan, to move or not move? Not moved. Are the committee content with that? Thank you. The question is that Amendment 22 be agreed to. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. We've already dealt with that. The question is that Section 8 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The question is that Sections 9 and 10 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Can I call Amendment 23 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, grouped with Amendments 24 and 25? Cabinet Secretary, to move Amendment 23 and speak to all amendments in the group, please. Uh, Convener, I move Amendment 23 in my name. Any decision to revoke an air weapon certificate is a serious one. Uh, the initial grant or subsequent renewal is a matter for the Chief Constable and must be taken in light of the evidence available at that time. Uh, the matter to be taken, the matters to be taken into account by the Chief Constable when granting or renewing a certificate are clearly set out in Section 5 of the Bill, and in the majority of cases, it, we would not expect the position to change radically for most certificate holders during the period of the certificate, that is, uh, for the five-year period. However, a person's situation or circumstances might change, or new evidence may come to light which casts doubt on the person's suitability to hold a certificate. In such circumstances, the Chief Constable may reconsider the position and decide to revoke the certificate if the person no longer meets the requirement to hold one. Amendments 23, 24 and 25 make it clearer that any such revocation of an air weapon certificate should be as a result of new or further evidence coming to light about the suitability of a person to hold a certificate since it was granted or renewed. These amendments were suggested by the Law Society of Scotland in their submission to the committee and I am therefore moving amendment at 23 uh, and to invite the committee to support these amendments. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Does any other member wish to enter the debate? Cabinet Secretary, I take it that you forgo your right to wind up. Uh, in which case the question is that Amendment 23 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Can I call Amendment 24 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary? Already debated with Amendment 23. Cabinet Secretary to move formally, please. Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 24 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? agreed. Can I call Amendment 25 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary? Already debated with Amendment 23. Cabinet Secretary, to move formally, please. Moved. Uh, the question is that Amendment 25 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you. The question is that Section 11 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The question is that Sections 12 and 13 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 26 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary? Already debated with Amendment 15. Cabinet Secretary, to move formally, please. Moved. Thank you. Uh, the question is that Amendment 26 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? agreed? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 27 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary? Already debated with Amendment 15. Cabinet Secretary, to move formally, please. Moved. The question is that Amendment 27 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? agreed. Thank you. The question is that Section 14 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you. 
The question is that sections 15 to 23 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you. Uh, can I call Amendment 28 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, grouped with Amendments 29 and 30? Uh, Mr Buchanan, could you move Amendment 28 and speak to all amendments in the group, please? Thank you, Convener. This amendment was seeking to clarify that instructors and an approved club can repair or test the weapons. Uh, they should be able to do that because it's highly impractical to expect participants to go to a registered firearms dealer every time they have to repair or test a gun, even if it's just a minor fault. So this is really a clarification point, if it's permitted, uh, do we need amendments to correct this? In section 31, oh no, sorry, it was 30, wasn't it? We just in 30, that was, that was all. Okay, any other member wish to enter the debate here? No, Cabinet Secretary, please. Uh, thank you, Convener. And I understand the intention behind uh, Mr Buchanan's amendment. We are clear that the sale and transfer of air weapons for trade or business purposes should only be undertaken, as now, by firearms dealers registered under the provisions of the Firearms Act 1968. Mr Buchanan's amendments do not alter that principle. However, the amendment recognises that repair and testing, particularly in clubs, may be carried out uh, on an informal basis in many cases, and I am aware that a number of stakeholders have asked questions about how Section 24 of the Bill will uh, come into effect. Uh, in principle, it appears sensible to allow club officials to undertake such repairs or tests, and this may be part of the service, which uh, members pay an annual subscription or other fee for. We have uh, always been clear that we see air weapons clubs as the ideal environment for shooters to participate in their sport, and Mr Buchanan's amendment is consistent with that particular approach. However, in the way in which Mr Buchanan has approached at this particular issue, it leaves some questions over the detail of this with particular doubt about who could undertake such work and under what circumstances. It wouldn't be appropriate, for example, for this inadvertently to undermine the existing RFD structures and the protection that they provide. Uh, as such, I would ask Mr Buchanan not to press his amendment at this stage, but in doing so, I am happy to assure him and the committee that we will examine this issue in more detail uh, alongside uh, stakeholders and consider bringing forward an appropriate amendment at stage three to address this issue. Thank you, Mr Buchanan. To wind up and press her withdraw, please. Thank you. I, I, I listen to what you say. I just wonder why, if I can, I suppose I can't ask the question, but why you can't uh, put it in, uh, you can't amend it as, as we've suggested now, rather than adding it in later. Well, I, I think that I would be impossible for the Cabinet Secretary to right. amend on the hoof. Right. I think he's just given you the assurance that if he is willing it. to look at that at stage okay. three, Mr Buchanan. Thank so you. So can I ask you if you wish to press or withdraw? In this case, I will withdraw. Uh, are the committee content that uh, Amendment 28 is withdrawn? Can I call Amendment 29 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 28? Mr Buchanan, to move or not move? Not moved. Um, are the committee content that 29 is not moved? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 30 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 28? Mr Buchanan, to move or not move? Not moved. Are the committee content with that? Agreed. Thank you. Um, can I call Amendment 31 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 7? Mr Buchanan, to move or not move? Uh, not moved. Are the committee content with that? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 32 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, already debated with Amendment 7? Cabinet Secretary, to formally move, please. Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 32 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Uh, the question is that section 24 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The question is that section 25 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Can I call amendment 33 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary? Already debated with amendment 7. Cabinet Secretary, to move formally, please. Moved. The question is that amendment 33 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Um, the question is that section 26 be agreed to. Oh, sorry. The question is that sections 27 to 30 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Agreed. Thank you. 
uh, con uh, call Amendment 34 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and a group in its own Cabinet Secretary to move and speak to Amendment 34, please. Uh, convener, one of the aims of the licence regime we are introducing is to identify who holds air weapons and where in Scotland they are. A person will need to make proper arrangements for keeping their air weapon securely and, will, and we will work with, the police, Scot with police Scotland and Shooting Interest to develop guidance on safekeeping and other arrangements. We will not require people with air weapons to purchase and install full-scale gun cabinets in every case but there are already secure systems available for keeping air weapons safe. Section 31 of the Bill makes, uh, it makes it an offence for a person to fail to take such security precautions. In addition, it will be an offence to fail to notify the police if an air weapon is lost or stolen. The lost or, uh, loss or theft of a firearm could leave it open uh, to unauthorised or criminal use and is therefore a serious matter. However, following evidence given to the committee by the Scottish Police Federation and in further discussion we have had with Police Scotland, we agree that the original drafting of the provision was overly strict, uh, overly strict in stating that someone must inform the police immediately of any theft or loss. This uh, amendment changes that time frame uh, to allow for individuals to report such loss as soon as reasonably practical. This means a person who uh, a person would not be penalised, for example, for not being able to report these details due to circumstances out with their control, such as uh, being on holiday or being unwell. Ultimately, any judgment as to the reasonableness of any delay will be a matter for the police prosecutors and the courts on a case-by-case -case basis. I believe that this is a practical approach uh, to the need to ensure that proper care is taken over the security and handling of air weapons, and therefore I move Amendment 34 in my name. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. Does anyone else wish to enter the debate on this one? No? Um, I take it that uh, you don't wish to wind up, Cab Cabinet Secretary, so I will ask the question. Is Amendment 34 agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you very much. The question is that section 31 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you. The question is that sections 32 to 37 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you. Can I call amendment 35 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and a group in its own? Cabinet Secretary, to move and speak to the amendment, please. Convener, amendment uh, 35 inserts, uh, inserts a new section to the Bill on Crown application. Uh, under arrangements at Westminster, the existing firearms legislation did not automatically apply to the Crown, and the Firearms Act 1968 contains complicated provisions dealing with Crown servants and their use and possession of air weapons. Uh, members will be aware, however, that in Scotland, legislation automatically applies to the Crown unless it expressly provides otherwise. It has been the policy of the Scottish Government that legislation should apply to the Crown as it applies to everyone else, unless specific exemptions are made, which is a view that members of this Parliament have endorsed. In line with this general policy, the air weapons licensing requirements will apply to the Crown, subject to the limited exemptions set out in paragraph 17 of Schedule 1 regarding public servants carrying out official duties. However, it is also uh, general policy to regulate how the provisions will relate to the Crown on the face of the Bill, where there are potential questions over criminal responsibility. This new provision will therefore exempt the Crown, um, excluding uh, persons in the public service of the Crown, uh, from being criminally liable for any controversion, contravention of a provision made by a, or under Part 1 of the Bill. However, by way of enforcement, it will provide for Scottish ministers, the chief constable or other public body or office holders having responsibility for enforcement of these provisions to apply to the Court of Session for a declarator of unlawfulness in relation to any act or omission of the Crown which constitutes such a contravention. This is the standard approach to this type of situation, and I would invite the committee to agree to the insertion of this new provision by way of Amendment 35, which I now move. 
Thank you very much, uh, Cabinet Secretary. Does anyone else wish to enter the debate on this one? Forgo your right to wind up, Cabinet Secretary, in which case the question is that Amendment 35 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you. The question is that sections 38 and 39 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Thank you. Can I call Amendment 36 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 1. Mr Buchanan, to move or not move, please. Moved. Uh, the question is that 36, Amendment 36 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Uh, in which case we go to the vote. Those in favour of Amendment 36, please show. And those against Amendment 36, please show. Thank you. Uh, those in favour of Amendment 36, one. Those against, five. The question is disagreed to. Can I call Amendment 37 in the name of Cameron Buchanan, already debated with Amendment 1. Mr Buchanan, to move or not move? Moved. Um, uh, the question, uh, are we all agreed? Oh. On, um, sorry, I'll start again. Uh, question is that Amendment 37 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Okay, we go to the vote. Those in favour of Amendment 37, please show. And those against 37, please show. Thank you. Those in favour, one. Those against, five. The question is disagreed to. Thank you. Uh, the question is that Section 40 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. That ends consideration of amendments uh, today, for today. I thank members for their participation. Our next meeting is on Wednesday the 20th of May when we will consider part two of the bill on alcohol licensing. I remind members again the deadline for lodging amendments in part two is this coming Friday the 15th of March at 12 noon. I now close today's meeting. Thank you. <laughs>